Professor Wergley is here taking a look at the New York Times viewer. The lecture is called New York Times Reader. This is one of the most important lectures for your final project. It's a great example of what you can build and how to solve real world problems. So try to pick a final project that will actually help you or other people in their daily lives. Now, what you need to do here is go to this first link and actually apply for your developer's license. You'll actually get an API key and then you can start using their APIs. Uh, if you've taken 2830, it's similar to when we did the NASA API viewer where we viewed the uh, Mars rover photos. Okay, you have to go and get your API key. Once you have your API key, then you can pull corresponding information. Now, one of the best final projects that I've seen was actually exactly one year ago when the pandemic first started. There wasn't that many COVID-19 data trackers. And in fact, I don't remember this being here the time that the student made that application. But I had a student make a COVID-19 uh, case tracker as well as deaths across the United States and different countries. And it was a JavaFX app. It connected to an API and it scraped some data from the web. And then it showed the cases as graphs and corresponding information. You could download the data. You could save the data and load additional data into the application. It showed graphs. It showed charts. And uh, it was pretty cool. It was, it was real-time data. In fact, the student after the semester tried to publish it on the web. And at about that time that they were publishing theirs on the web, everybody came out with one. Okay, and then Google came out with one and then everybody had one on the web, but it was a great idea because it was solving a real world problem at that time. Now you can still do COVID-19 data trackers. You'll see even the New York Times has COVID-19 data. So we're going to be using a particular part of this API and you're more than welcome to explore additional parts of the New York Times for your final project. But you won't want to copy this lecture directly. You can take the code and the ideas and then explore other parts of the API. First things first, you need to create an account. So you'll see getting started, you need to create an account, either sign in or create an account. If you create an account, they just ask for some basic information. You can put your student email, create a password, agree to the terms and go ahead and continue. You should get an email notification. You'll get it pretty quickly and just verify that that email is yours. Then you can sign in. So I've already created my account. If you have not created an account, go ahead and stop the video and create one now. After you get the account created, come back and log in with me. Okay, once you log in, this is what you should see. So first, let's take a look at their APIs. We're gonna be using the article search API, but look how many APIs they have. They have a books API, I've seen students use this. They have a movie reviews API. I've seen this being used. Um, they have a bunch of APIs. You can see semantic, most popular, uh, times tags, times wires, top stories. And recently I saw this on the homepage. They even have COVID-19 data. You may take a look at this. This may be a, a good thing to use to uh, help you with your final project. Now, if you're going to be using an API, that's actually bonus opportunities. So if you go to the final project, I've listed some possible bonus opportunities, although this is not all of them. But you'll see an API, which is what we're using today, is five bonus points. An external jar library like we did with the JSON simple or the zip4j if you go out and find your own and use your own and use the docs and reference it. That's possible five bonus points or using a database or a really complicated project, or awesome UI design, user experience. These are all five bonus points with a maximum of 10. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at an API. So this is a good final project example that also goes above and beyond the course by using an API. Now what's cool about this is you can use this code. So you can use this code and apply it to different APIs. Like maybe you do a movie reviews app, or maybe you do a books app. We're going to be looking at article search. So make sure you pick an API that has good documentation. And this documentation is built really well. You'll see an article search. It talks about how to do the query. 
It has an example call. Okay, you can actually go to it on the web. You actually need to put your API key. If I put a key from a previous semester, you'll see I get back corresponding data. Now, what's cool about APIs and using them on the web is you can visit them from a browser because it's using a Git request. And this is a bunch of JSON. So if I copy it and actually go to a JSON viewer, you can actually see the corresponding information. So I'll paste what I got from the browser. And if I go to the viewer, you'll see this is a JSON array. You'll see the status is okay. Copyrighted material. If I look at the response, the response has docs. And if I open up the docs, you'll see corresponding information. So it has an abstract, a web URL, a snippet, a lead paragraph. You'll see I have the source, the publication date, document type. And I have a bunch of corresponding information. I also have keywords. You have keywords. I have the headline. You have the headline. And I also have multimedia. So there may be pictures and, and videos and other corresponding data. What's cool about this is, is I can actually visit this URL link. Okay, so let's say I go back here to one of these first ones. And here's an image. Let me scroll up. Okay, here's the web URL. So if I copy this, I'm just randomly picking one. And go to it on the web. You'll see that actually it pulls up the corresponding article. Now, what I want to do is the New York Times is actually a nice website. Okay, so it's a really nice website. It has a bunch of information, but it's complicated. You'll see all these news articles. It does have a search functionality, but it's just a lot of information. It's almost too much information, hard to find what you're looking for. I can use the search bar. I can, you know, use the nav bar and try to filter out the data, but it'd be nice to just have a simple application. I have a search bar. I have the corresponding articles as a list. I can click on an article and it shows the article's information. And that's what we're going to build today. So first, you need to register an account and get your API key. Then you need to read the documentation on how the API works. And you should do an example call in the browser. Look what the data looks like. See what corresponding information you have. See what data that you can show. If I go back to the final project, you'll see default data. This is a great way to knock out two birds with one stone. Having an API could have default data. So then the TAs have data that they can view while they're grading your application. If you're creating, let's say, a note-taking application and you're trying to keep track of all your class notes, you'd want to be able to load some default notes so the TAs don't have to type in a bunch of notes just to see what your UI looks like. So once your application loads, you can have a little um, test file there that loads some notes in so they can see your app. They may create a new note or edit some of the previous notes but you'll want to have some default data there. And what a lot of students will do is they'll implement an API to try to knock out two birds with one stone. You'll see this is zero points, but it's actually worth a score. So you can still get a deduction. So if I go over the API, you can read about it. You can see how to do a search and it can get really complicated. You can actually search by headline, search by querying. You can see there's blogs, different categories. There's a lot of information there. This is a good API. Okay, this is a good API. And you can actually look at the demo. Okay, you can look at the demo. So you can actually query this API. So here's a query. Let's say I type in University of Missouri. And if I scroll down, if I execute, okay, you'll see I need an API key. So if I authorize, and select my API key. And now try to do it. You'll see it works. And it actually gives you back the same data that I got in the browser. But look how nicely formatted it is. You'll see I have responses and I have a docs, which is an array. So I have all the documents. Each document has an abstract, a web URL, a snippet, a lead paragraph, source, multimedia. 
just like we saw before. So they actually put it in a JSON viewer for you so you could read it nice and easily. And it tells you what you can do. You can have the begin date, end date. You can have the query string. So the University of Missouri. And it tells you a lot of information about the API. These are the types of APIs that you want to use. If I go and find some random API and there's no documentation, it doesn't really tell you how to use it, you're going to have a really hard time to actually pull data and get an application to work. If you have a well-documented API like this one, then you can get something going quickly and easily and just follow the documentation. Okay, one place that I see a lot of students get APIs, it's called Rapid API. And you can search for APIs on here. I've seen a lot of students use it. Some APIs work, some APIs don't. It's a good place to start. You can even just do a Google search. So I see people looking for sports data. So they do sports data APIs. You can just do a Google search. You can do it on rapid APIs, search for sports data. Or maybe you like books or games or uh, movies or Anything you can search for any type of data that you want to display on your application. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use this example and actually create an application. Now, the base code for this application is here in this zip file. So, download this zip file and then we'll go ahead and load it into NetBeans. The first part about selecting an API is doing a little bit of research, doing a Google search, seeing how many people use the API, seeing how good the documentation is, determining whether it's free or whether you have to pay for it. These are all important factors for choosing a good API. Download the zip, put it into NetBeans. I'm going to show you how to use this API to create an awesome application, but we're going to do that in the next video. Stick with Professor Wergelis, and we'll see you in the next video.